In 2023, China's homegrown large jetliner, the C919, officially entered commercial service. But right after its debut, observers started pointing out something odd. This plane looked eerily similar to the French Airbus A320. From the outside to the specs, it was almost a twin. So the big question is, is the C919 truly a breakthrough in independent engineering, or just a high-flying clone? Let's rewind for a moment and take a look at how China's big plane project came to be. China's big airplane dream dates back to the 1970s when then-leader Mao Zedong pushed for the development of a large passenger aircraft. That project was codenamed Yun-10. After 10 years of work, it became clear the technology just wasn't up to global standards. In the end, the dream was shelved and the project was declared a failure. Fast forward to 2008, the Chinese State Council approved the creation of COMAC, the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China. This time, the government meant business. The large jet program was elevated to a full-on national strategy. After 14 years of research and development, the C919 finally made its commercial debut in 2023. It was hailed as the first domestically developed jetliner for China's civil aviation market. A narrow-body single-aisle jet built for short to medium-range routes, standard capacity 168 seats, maximum 190. The C919's core engineering team was largely drawn from China's former aviation conglomerate. Many of them had experience working on Boeing and Airbus joint assembly projects in China, like the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320. In fact, a number of engineers who helped assemble those aircraft later joined the C919 team. So why did this supposedly homegrown C919 face such instant skepticism? Because many experts and insiders believe it's not a breakthrough, it's a copy, a reversed engineer clone of the Airbus A320. The Vanishing A320 According to reports from French outlet Liberation and others, back in the early 2000s, China bought two early test models of the Airbus A320. One of them, registered as F-WWBA, was never listed in China's civil aviation registry. It never flew commercial routes, and it never made its way back to Airbus for maintenance. It just vanished. French business magazine Capital recently reported a theory. The plane was dismantled for reverse engineering, giving birth to the C919 copycat jet. What is reverse engineering? It's taking a real plane apart, piece by piece, sketching out every part, reproducing them one by one, and then putting the whole thing back together, like tracing with industrial tools. In January 2025, Alan Juliet, the former head of economic intelligence for France's DGSE, told a French public TV documentary that in the early 2000s, we sold China two A320s. One of them completely vanished from radar. It never even flew. At the June 2025 Paris Air Show, former Airbus VP of Intelligence Gathering Patrick Duveau told the Epic Times in an English-language interview, When that A320 suddenly became a ghost plane, we knew, we thought, they're dismantling it, they're replicating every single part. And when the C919 showed up, we said right away, that's an A320. How similar are the C919 and the A320 really? What really raised eyebrows was the fact that the C919 and the A320 share shockingly similar specs. Let's look at the numbers. C919, fuselage length 38.9 meters, wingspan 35.8 meters, height 11.95 meters. A320, fuselage length 37.57 meters, wingspan 34.1 meters, height 11.76 meters. The C919 has a max takeoff weight of 75.1 tons, an empty weight of 45.7 tons, and typically carries 158 to 174 passengers. Its max range? About 5,555 kilometers. Top cruising speed? Mach 0.78. Now the A320. Maximum takeoff weight? 72.5 tons. Empty weight? 42.6 tons. Passenger range? 150 to 180. Range, around 6,100 kilometers, and yep, cruising speed, Mach 0.78. Canadian political commentator Zhang Shen said it plainly, The C919 is more of a political project than an engineering one, built not for innovation but to serve the narrative of independent development. The C919 made its first commercial flight on May 28th. Sure, no accidents yet, but I wouldn't trust it. It's a patchwork, a knockoff, built from whatever tech they could buy, copy or borrow. You can't truly trust a plane like that. It's a political trophy built for propaganda. Even if you gave me a free ticket, I wouldn't fly on it. 
Look at the P4 lab in Wuhan, built with French help, but once France pulled out, it was all run by China. Even if you have Western hardware, you've still got Chinese software and operations. That's a risky combo, and now with China's economy in decline, who knows what corners are being cut to save costs. If something goes wrong, it won't be small. Is the C919 really made in China or just assembled there? Even though the C919 is branded as a flagship of Chinese high-tech, it still relies heavily on the West for critical components. According to France's Aerospace Industry Association, about 80% of the plane's parts come from American or European suppliers. For example, the C919 uses a Leap 1C engine made by CFM International, a joint venture between the US and France. Its avionics and flight control systems come from Honeywell and GE in the US and Thales in France. The hydraulics and pneumatics, supplied by Parker and Eaton from the US and Messier Bugatti from France. Landing gear and brakes, that's Lieber of Germany and Safran of France. Taiwanese economist Shi Sung Wang pointed out on the show Critical Moment that although China heavily promotes the C919 as an independently developed aircraft, it's actually not certified by the FAA in the US or EASA in Europe. That means it flies, but only within Chinese airspace. If you look inside the C919, we've already mentioned some parts. The radar flight decoder, that's made by GE in the US. The weather radar, electronic control systems, and even the flight simulators, companies like Rockwell, also American. Some people push back and say, that's outdated, China's already replaced lots of parts with domestic versions. But here's the catch, Gu Wei, a top gas turbine engineer in China, has made it clear. The three key components of a turbine engine, the compressor, combustion chamber and turbine itself, require years of foundational research and testing. Even with money, you wouldn't know where to begin without deep experience. He gave an example. Take turbine blades. Sure, China might be able to copy the exact shape of a US blade, but that's not enough. These parts require over 50,000 hours of flight testing to be certified. Without that, how do you know they're safe? Just building them isn't the same as proving they work. These certifications take an enormous amount of time, and the process matters. The West uses strict, standardized certification methods, but China's own certification system? It's not recognized internationally. So, unless you invest years and mountains of data, forget about meeting the 50,000-hour standard. Take GE, for example. They're the only company in the world that produces integrated composite fan blades and sealing systems. They're the best in the business, but even for them, it takes 10 to 15 years just to design, test and certify. So how can China, with just a few years under its belt, expect to catch up that fast? These things take time, lots of it. So how did Airbus and France respond to the allegations? When it comes to accusations of copying and cloning, neither COMAC nor the Chinese government has ever given a straight answer. Instead, they always use vague language, saying things like, we've integrated advanced international experience and drawn on the strength of Airbus and Boeing. Basically, they blur the line between innovation and imitation on purpose. And what about Airbus? To this day, they've never issued any public protest or filed a lawsuit. According to the French business magazine Capital, Airbus has remained silent, afraid of commercial retaliation. After all, Airbus is opening a massive A320 assembly plant in Tianjin, China, and had already sold more than 100 planes to the Chinese market. France's public broadcaster M6 also reported that Airbus continues to deny any wrongdoing took place. Former Airbus executive Patrick DeVoe put it bluntly, China is a massive market, we need to maintain a good relationship. Taiwanese political scientist Ko Ching Chong commented that in chasing short-term profits, Airbus may have won big orders, but ultimately lost control of its own technology. So this year, Ma Keqiong, the French president, took the Airbus C-919. In 2023, French President Macron traveled to Beijing with Airbus's CEO and sold nearly 300 planes, 292 to be exact. But there was a catch. The Chinese government said, we'll buy them, but you must set up a production line in Tianjin. They already had one there, but even then, the critical components had to be shipped from France. 
So for 292 aircraft, that's 292 sets of key parts. Xi Jinping said, ship the critical stuff from France, assemble them here, and source everything else locally. Only if China absolutely can't make something, then only then you're allowed to import it fully assembled. In other words, even though China bought the planes, the real money was made by the local partners. Airbus didn't profit as much as you'd think, and that's part of China's long game. The real goal? Train people on Airbus tech, learn to assemble the A320, how the line works, how it's managed, how it's engineered. Then use that knowledge to build the C919. And once it launched, what do you know, it looked just like an A320. Why? Because the same people built both. Sure, China still can't copy things like engines, but the rest? They're figuring it out. Xi Jinping's mindset was, I'll buy your planes, but you better help me learn how to make them. So what's the result? China gets the tech, then stops buying. Airbus ends up creating a competitor. They won the order, but lost the edge, and now they might be fighting against their own technology. Cho Cheng Chong also pointed out that China's habit of copying and cloning aircraft didn't start with the C919. It goes way back to the 1960s. They've always called it reverse engineering. China has always emphasized self-reliance and tech. Back in the day, they bought planes from the Soviets, designed blueprints and assembly lines included. Ideally, everything would be built in China. They developed a whole strategy around reverse engineering. It's like how they once bought bombers. Same idea as what's happening now with commercial jets. They'd buy a bomber, take it apart, draw up every single part, try to replicate it, and then reassemble the whole thing just to see if it flies. That's reverse engineering. In the 60s, China poured a fortune into this process. And of course, early prototypes often couldn't fly. But they'd tinker and revise until something worked. For China, this wasn't just about building planes. It was about building talent, building tech. In case foreign suppliers ever cut them off, they wanted to be able to stand on their own.